uh, hi good morning everyone welcome to another session of in conversation with bright minds and today we have with us daniel abraham so um, daniel uh, is pretty busy and uh, you know thank you daniel that you have been able to go ahead and give us some time today and uh, it is fascinating to know that you have done your masters from madras school of economics uh, one of the very prestigious uh, colleges of india so why don't you tell us about your journey and you know how you decided to go for masters in economics and what you're currently doing oh yeah sure so um, uh, so after my 12th grade so i didn't want to do actually economics so i really wanted to become an uh, uh, engineer actually to be honest <laughs> but uh, somehow like uh i i couldn't make it so i chose mathematics so i have my bachelor's in mathematics from madras christian college and then i did my masters in econometrics uh from the university of madras uh, so i'm not from the madras school of economics it's a okay. different okay. okay okay yeah got it so i yeah so i did my masters from the university of madras and then i worked for like uh, two months at the agro economic research center uh, which is based on um the madras university and then for like 10 months i worked at the indian institute of management amdavad as a research assistant and then i'm here right so um you know tell us about your journey now like how is it there and uh, what are you exactly doing go ahead and tell it to our audience yeah sure so so uh, this program like i'm in a pre doctoral research fellow program um this program uh prepares me for my phd whether it could be a phd in economics or political science uh, or public policy program it prepares me for those those programs so first i am i'll be assisting uh, my faculty mentor uh, with their research projects so currently i'm working on a uh, women's political participation in nepal so that's the project i'm currently involved with so i work with a professor from political science department and and uh, also apart from that uh, i'll be i'm i'm taking a few classes like i'm i'm uh, undertaking a few classes over here so that is also a part of the program so the center uh, pro, uh, pays my tuition fee for those classes so so i'm like so those classes will help me in the preparation of my phd phd and phd applications yeah got it so how uh, long is a pre doctoral program and how does it uh, you know differ from a typical phd program and why not just go for a phd program directly yeah um so typically pre doctoral programs last for like 2 years uh okay. typical but some uh, do it only for a year as well so um uh, and uh, why not a phd directly so in the field of economics it's becoming a trend uh, to have a pre doctoral uh, pre doctoral fel- fellowships before you start a phd so that so you know how uh, competitive the economics field is right now uh so to get into the top schools uh so you need to have like a good research experience before and and uh, so this uh, experience will boost uh, your uh, admission chances into the top phd programs if you want to get into the top phd program and also uh, you can s- you can see whether the phd on the academia is is for you so it gives you an opportunity to see whether academia is the right fit for you so if if not you can always to uh, move to industry jobs if you don't like it so that is one good thing about this fellowship got it got it. so yeah. so you know what are the prerequisites of getting into this pre doctoral program do you have to show some uh experience um, in teacher assistantship or in as a research assistant before you join this program or how how does that work okay yeah so um, most um, I, i i may be wrong so 
uh, most of the U.S. universities require you to have like uh, at least four years bachelor degree. So three year bachelor degree might not be, um, uh, might not allow you to apply for these programs. Uh, but having uh, like the so I have my master's, so I I, I come under like uh, I I am eligible for applying for these fellowships. So it is it is good to have like a master's degree if you are applying for these fellowships from India. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like what What an engineering degree would be? Yeah, even engineering degree would really help, and also having a research experience is really uh, good. And also, uh, typically, what they expect is a strong motivation for strong motivation, and also you need to have some uh, skills in STATA or else R that is most widely used in economics and like social sciences. Got it. Got it. And. Uh, so you mentioned that you were also working here at IIM, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, was that a prerequisite or was it something you wanted to do? I mean, it, it wasn't required there, but still it, it it's just a part of the journey that you went through. Oh, it's just the part of the journey that I went through. So it's, it's not a prerequisite. I could have applied directly from... Uh, my masters, uh, uh, but I didn't know of, about these opportunities back then. So I believe that uh, IMA, uh, uh, the research experience I, at IMA has opened up a lot of opportunities uh, uh, for me. Yeah. Got and yeah. that is something you applied uh, while you were doing your masters or after you completed your masters? Yeah, after I completed my masters, I applied oh. to IMA. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what exactly was your role there? Uh, were you supposed to go ahead and uh, assist the faculty in the research or carry out some independent uh, programs also? Um, at IAMA, so I was assisting uh, uh, two faculties on their research projects. So I had like two amazing mentors from IAMA. Uh, so, but I didn't work in the economics area back at IAMA. So I worked in mostly on the supply chain management. So, but it involved a lot of metrics, econometrics work over there. So uh, I worked in like a very interesting project and uh, um, I, I, I co-authored a paper with those two faculties as well we have submitted. So it was like a really wonderful experience over there at IMA. Got um, yeah. So um, any one who has to go ahead and apply for such a, uh, um, you know, uh, for such uh, positions like a research assistant, what is a typical process that somebody has to follow? Can you just directly contact faculties of different colleges and try to mm -hmm. apply or, or how does that work? Or uh, is there any opening at a place where a person should be applying for? Uh, so uh, it, it depends from you know, uh, place to place. Uh, typically, you will find these about these positions uh, uh, on at the institute's websites, okay. um, and yeah, so the I would say like the the good uh, research assistant programs that is in India is in like at I IMA, IMB, and also ISB. Uh, they have like a very good research assistant programs, and and the research community is also um, pretty good at these institutes. And the application process will typically involve a cover letter. So why do you want to uh, be a research assistant and what skills you would bring to the program and uh, apart from that it will contain like a small coding test coding task yeah so like a like whichever language you will be working in like uh, it, it could be python r or else data so there will be a small coding task as well got and it. then you will have an interview with the faculty that you're going to work with okay got it got it. yeah um so um you know, going back to your master's experience, uh, do you also have some entrance when it comes to University of Madras or uh, how does the admission take place there? Uh, so it was like when I applied, it was COVID. So there was no entrance examinations. It was based on my yeah. bachelor's scores. Okay. Yeah, but now they do have an entrance examination. Okay. And is it is it a separate exam or is it part of the Central University entrance exam? Uh, no, so University of Madras is a state government university, so it's a separate 
uh, exam administered by the Department of Econometrics over there. Okay, okay, got it. Yeah. And how was the placement at the University of Madras? Uh, so there are not, like typically there are no campus placements actually at the university, there's no concept. So uh, you start applying to jobs at the end of your fourth, uh, like the final semester. And yeah, that's how it works over there. Okay, okay. But uh, no placement cell as such, is it? Yeah, there's no placement cell as such in the uh, university. Uh, there is one at the MBA department, uh, but apart from that, uh, I, as far as I know, yeah. I, I... Got it. Got it. Okay. So now coming back to your pre-doctoral program, how uh, much, uh, you know, monetarily, how many funds would a student require ideally to go ahead and to apply for this program? And do you also get stipend in such programs like it happens here in PhD or how is it there? So, so pre-doc uh, fellows are usually uh, given, given stipends. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, so it's it's more like a, like a pre-PhD program. So you don't pay anything uh, for this. So it is fully funded by the center or the university that you're working with. So you get your living stipend, health insurance covered. And yeah. Got it. And uh, like, for example, in PhD, typically we pay for the first two years and then we start getting the stipend. It's not the case with three dogs. No, right? no even, even with PhDs here in the United States, okay. uh, you get stipends even for the first two years. So you don't pay... For any anything uh, in the first two years as well oh is it no fees is required no no okay and then maybe it's different in india because as far as i know in india for the first two years a student is supposed to pay some nominal fee and then mm -hmm. they start receiving stipend uh, from the third year onwards uh, uh, although maybe the government, it, it depends the government uh, i think pays you um, if you have cleared a GRF exam, but I think so, you still have to go ahead and pay something to the university. Uh, maybe okay. it depends upon the university, I guess. Yeah. Right. So, so in this pre-doc program, are you also, um, you know, uh, so so you mentioned you're working on a research project, but are you also studying some subjects, typically like econometrics or any quantitative subject, or is it a completely research-based program? Yeah. So. Uh, typically for at Stanford here we have like a quarter system so it's not a semester system it's like 10 okay. weeks so each quarter I'm allowed to take classes like one or two classes so currently now uh, I'm taking a class in the in the political uh, in in one in Marxism politics and uh, um, other is like uh, I'm taking a probability class okay 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 yeah. but it, it can be intradiscipline is what I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be interdisciplinary based upon your interest or is like if you want, uh, like a uh, lot of people do take like math courses uh, because economics PhD programs require you to have like a very strong math background. So a lot of students, a lot of pre-docs take that as well. Got it. Right. Okay. One last question that I have for you. So uh, for students who, uh, you know, want to go ahead and do PhD, first of all, how do they, how would they know that they have a bent towards the research and not corporate? How did you get to know? What is, what, how do they understand that I don't want to go for the corporate world? And uh, secondly, um, how do you get that patience of keep, you know, of, of going ahead and continuing that study part? even after your master's and not going for a corporate job and not having that urge of kind of uh, starting that earning aspect. I mean, of course, you're getting paid stipend, but how do you still know that you still have that urge of going towards the educational part? Yeah, corporates pay better, to be honest. Yeah, corporates pay a lot uh, compared to the academia. Uh, but still, uh, so... So, for example, you in the in the two years you will read like a lot of papers. You'll do work with a lot of data. So, if you don't like reading papers and writing papers, typically, so it could hint that you are not the right fit for this place, right? Mm -hmm. So, even I am testing myself. Like, 
yeah i i i like my work at i am that's why i'm here so most mostly i like my i i'm i'm really enjoying the work over here so i'm i'll be applying to the phd programs next year um um so that's how you decide but but uh, to if you uh, if you want to earn more money it's better to go to corporate jobs like, okay <laughs> but um but you know money is one aspect how about the pay? i mean it's going to take uh, say about 4 years for phd and 2 years for this program so how about that patients part of of kind of continuing to uh, you know yeah. be in, in this program for the next 6 years It, it's like literally being the amount of time you dedicate to becoming a doctor right so yeah so so how do you get that patience and how do you make sure that you know you still have the interest till the very end when you're towards the end <laughs> so i say it is the motivation uh, and it is so if you like what you are doing so you will not feel bored or you hmm. right so a lot of phd students over, over here they are like really ambitious working working on great, very really very interesting projects and they really like the work they do so uh, some go to field works in like developing countries like in africa like in okay. uh, even some uh, south asian countries like uh, like bangladesh nepal even in india lot of lot of phd students go to field work and uh, they really like the work they do so you so that is that that's the only one thing that will keep you motivated to stay on this for like the next 5 6 years got it yes of yeah. course <laughs> right yeah. so um, thank you daniel thank you so much for your time i think it was a good conversation and it will really help our uh, students to know more about such programs and um, in case i still get any doubts i will shoot that shoot them back to you and i i will get some answers from you okay, uh, okay thank you sure. so much for your time and have a good night yeah you too thank you thank great you. talking to you same yeah. here